Beloved of God, grace, mercy, and peace to you all from God, our Creator, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship at Bonaire Presbyterian this holy night. Finally, you and I have made it. It is Christmas Eve at last. And how good it is to share a part of this holy night with you, especially those of you who've joined us as guests. What a lovely Christmas gift that is to us. Thank you ever so much. 
Among our guests this evening are two who are sharing musical gifts, especially Emma Dulog on harp and Greg Bowen on violin. On behalf of the congregation, I certainly do thank you. Stephen Henley, our organist, is not a guest, but Stephen, you are definitely appreciated. So too is Meredith Haney, our soprano vocalist. Thank you both for sharing your gifts and helping us celebrate the nativity. If you think that you would uh, enjoy worshiping while holding a candle a little later this evening, you might find one and have it close by. In the latter part of the service, I'll invite you to light it, to hold it safely and to enjoy it while we sing and pray. It is a sweet Christmas tradition here at Bon Air Presbyterian. As a part of this evening's service, we're receiving an offering that will be distributed to Acts RVA. That's a ministry with the homeless. And also a portion of it will go to the pastor's discretionary funds. Finally, this coming Sunday, a single service will be offered at 10 a.m. It'll be offered by Zoom, also on Facebook. It will be relaxed and just a little bit of fun. I'm going to read for you an alternative Christmas story that Sunday, and I think you might enjoy it. All right. Are you ready? Let's begin our time of worship. The Lord be with you and also with you. With hope and expectation, let us pray. Holy God, having heard the promise of the prophets, having sensed the beating of angels' wings, and having seen your star high in the heavens, we have come in search of you. Grant that we may find not only you this evening, but ourselves as well, as we are drawn together in adoration, wonder, and love. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, the grace of God has appeared, bringing light to us all. With confidence and joy, let us confess our sins. Praying together. 
gracious God, in ancient days, you promised to send a redeemer to your people. And in sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be born as one among us, you proved to be completely faithful, fully loving, and as wonderfully good as your word. We admit that we have not loved you as we should, and at times we have been anything but loving to others, to mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, to neighbors nearby and those in other places. And sometimes we have realized the unhappiness this brings, not only to others, but to ourselves as well. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our first lesson tonight comes from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy of the harvest, as people exult when they're dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness for this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Our second lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. It foretells the birth of Jesus, telling us, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. third lesson comes from the first chapter of Matthew, verses 18 to 24. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 
She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. Our fourth lesson it comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, and it also tells us of the birth of Jesus. It reads, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to, to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Throughout the season of Advent, we have tried to sense and stay open to the work that God is doing within us and through us. We've given ourselves to hoping for what God in Christ has promised to bring about for us and for all of creation. We've sought to make ourselves ready to be prepared to receive and to respond with joy to our Lord's self-giving. We've remembered the importance of witnessing, noticing the place Christ already has in our lives and the love that he's even now trying to bring into play through creation. We've noted what God has promised through Jesus, the hope of transformation, the peace that comes with justice, love, 
that encompass us all in our diversity and life with God forever. And in light of this all, we have prayed with Christ's mother, Mary. Let it be, O oh God, let it be. Now tonight we light the Christ candle, knowing and trusting that in the once and future coming of Christ, God is in absolute love for the whole world, letting it be. Let us pray. God, we rejoice in your steadfast presence in our life and in your unique presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary, growing through childhood to assume a life of service, manifesting in himself in every way your peace, love, and justice. His voice is undimmed by the centuries. His call and his promises are as clear to us as they were to his first disciples. And so now we respond, come, Lord Jesus, come to us. Be born in us this holy night, in our hearts, in our minds, in this community of your creating. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us into the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us, and Christ at the heart of all creation. May it be so for us and for all. Amen. Our fifth lesson is from the second chapter of Luke, verses 8 to 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child 
wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. continue with Luke's story. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what they'd been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Well, friends, do you know what I'm struck by, especially this evening? It's all the coming and going that's going on. Not my own, though I have come and gone several times today, and not even yours, though yours is also likely to have been very vigorous and unceasing this Christmas Eve. No, the coming and going that's made the biggest impression on me is that which Luke pictures for us. Did you notice it as well? First, the Messiah comes. Hooray! He's born to Mary and laid in a manger. Then, to a group of shepherds late at night, an angel comes announcing the Messiah's birth as good news for them and for all humankind. Then a whole choir of angels comes from heaven and conveys to those shepherds how marvelous God is and what a mercy God has bestowed upon the whole creation that night. Then all the angels go, withdrawing into heaven where presumably they sing their song of praise before the sovereign's throne. Then the shepherds go as fast as they can 
They go off to see if what they thought they'd heard was in fact true. The shepherds come to the cattle shed. And there they meet Mary and Joseph and they find the infant wrapped in a blanket, resting in that manger. And yes, it is exactly what they'd been told to look for. And they tell everyone who will listen to them everything that they'd seen and heard. And then they go back to their sheep in the fields outside Bethlehem, where quite a bit, like the angels themselves, they cut loose, glorifying God for the Messiah they were sure had come to them. And maybe also imagining what else would be coming for them and where they would go because of the coming of that child the Savior. There is so much coming and going in this story. Such astonishing, vigorous coming and going. And now, as a result of it all and of so many other things that have followed, you and I have come we have come in some sense this evening to this place, to this circumstance. We've come presumably to worship, though perhaps we've come to see what all the worshiping is about. And we've come to hear Luke's story, to let it come aside our own stories for the first time or the 15th time, or perhaps the 40th time, and to sense the way that it affects us now, what it says to us, how it leaves us feeling now this story, perhaps wistful, or worried, or wondering, or wanting, or willing, worshipful, maybe even wildly worshipful, given who has come and why he has come, it wouldn't be strange, even among Presbyterians, for a little wild worship to erupt this night or within these God-gripped hearts, at least. Christ our Savior has come to bring us into peace with God, to bring all humankind into heaven's profound peace. Honestly, I can't help but believe that more deeply than anything else, maybe much more deeply than even we realize, it is his coming that has brought us here. And it is his presence that meets us this night, that moves us here, that nourishes us here, and that soon will send us away from here. Yes, you and I will be sent away by Christ. The Messiah who is also our master means for us to go. Just as surely as he meant for us to come, he means for us to go. Just as surely as he meant for those angels to go on with their appointed work in heaven. Just as surely as he meant for those shepherds to go on from the stable and to get on with what he set in motion in their lives. Even so, surely Christ means for us to go and to get on with, well, with what? Life, perhaps? No, surely not that. Not mere life 
anyway. Not life as usual. Not life considering the alternative. Not life slowly dribbling away until sadly it's all gone. Not life clutched wildly, either defensively or fearfully to one's breast. Not life just because, not life for self, not any of this. Rather, our Lord means for us to go and get on with life for him. Life from him, life with him, life with our Savior and with the Savior of the world. And that really is no mere life. Oh no, it is life in abundance. It is life overflowing. It is life in eternity, beginning right here, right now. You and I are in eternity. It is life grounded in and growing out of profound peace with God. It is life emerging through the Holy Spirit's creativity and power. It is an inspired life through the Holy Spirit. It is purposeful. It is life lit up, sustained by hope. It is a life of compassion and concern for others, of crossing the aisle and expressing real care. Let those walls come down. It's a life of connection with others and holy communion. It is life of courage and boldness, adventure and risk of faith and self-surrender into the gracious will of God. Let it be to us according to your word, Lord. It is life with God. God with us, Emmanuel. Who though he certainly sends us, is never actually very far away from us. He's always with us, Emmanuel, always to the end of the age. And so, friends, do you hear him? Our Savior urges us, go on, get on with your life the life I've given you, the life I'm leading you into, your life for me, your life from me, our life with Christ our Savior. Like those shepherds in their fields, in the fields of your endeavors, in your homes and in your workplaces, in your church and in the community, in your roles and your relationships and your responsibilities. Make your living and your worship all of one piece. Make it a continual unfolding song of praise. Be known as those who keep Christmas all the year round, who do not hesitate to tell others what you know of God's love and who are ready to share God's love with anyone to whom God sends you, to share the gospel from your heart because you have taken it to heart. It is indeed good news of a great joy which will come to all the people, including those to whom it will come through you. Which means, you understand? That you are angels yourselves. Friends, are you ready to fly? 
Are you ready to sing? Are you ready to offer the gloria of your faith and compassion for those in need? Are you ready to get on with your life in the service of the Savior? It's almost time to go. Living Lord Christ, our Savior, you are born and your light is shed upon the earth. In you, the desolate find deep comfort. The broken are held and healed. The hungry receive sustenance and the mourning rise to sing new songs of life. As you come to us, may you find in us hearts willing and fully ready to go on in your spirit, to act with inspiration, to care as those who are completely cared for, and to live into and out of the good news that you have spoken to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Beloved, God's extraordinary gift of self in Christ inspires generations to go and do likewise. This evening, the offering being received here at Bonaire Church provides resources for those who are homeless and money that will be distributed through the pastor's discretionary fund.
Generous God, though we are something less than angels, you have given us the angels' task to proclaim your coming, to announce your love, and to show forth your salvation by word and deed. And this we joyfully do. Through this offering, give wings to our witness that your great joy may come to others as it has come to us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our seventh lesson. Our seventh lesson comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, proclaiming, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it.
Please pray with me. Generous God, hear where you have drawn us all this evening, welcoming each one in a warm embrace. Here in this place of worship, we lift our thankful hearts to you for the bounties of your grace and favor, for life, for its sweet pleasures and its deep mysteries, for its challenges and satisfactions, for places where we feel at home, and for the friends and loved ones who contribute to that, for your kind provision for our needs and the comfort of your watch care over us always, for every pure and lovely joy with which you've enriched our lives, and especially those that gladden our hearts as we remember your mercies this evening. Lord God, we thank you humbly now. Having heard a living and challenging word this evening, we pray for your guidance and for strength to respond to that word with faith. We ask you to give us discerning hearts, quiet minds, and centered souls amid the noise and tumult of our daily lives so that we may not fail you. Give us strength of spirit that we may strive for what we know to be right. Grant us compassion for those in pain of any sort this evening and sympathy for all who are in need and especially for those among whom we dwell. And give us faith, dear Lord, such faith in you that in all circumstances, we may live as those who know themselves to be your beloved children, well-loved, children who want nothing so much as the chance to know and please you, the very thing you so graciously promise us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go, go as those beloved by God, and may you be securely held in God's great love, nourished always by the bread of life, and continually be open to the Spirit's promptings. Let the joy of those angels bear you up, and may you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Merry Christmas.